So I'm guessing you want a lush green carpet in your low-tech planted aquarium. You don't have expensive gear or a CO2 system, but you want some carpet at the bottom to make the tank look amazing. I don't really have any high-tech setups myself either. And I've achieved a couple of carpets in the past. So today I thought I'd put together 10 great carpeting plants for your low-tech aquarium. You can easily carpet out all these plants, some carpet quicker than others. We're gonna rank the list from the worst to the best. So yeah, make sure you stick around. And with that said, let's get straight into the list. All right, now quickly before we get into the list, I need to make sure that you've got the right substrate for a carpeting plant, meaning really coarse gravel won't work and really fine sand also won't work. So substrate wise for a carpeting plant, ideally coarse sand, fine gravel, normal gravel and aqua soil are usually the ways to go. I find that aqua soil and coarse sand work the best, but also make sure you've got root tabs or some nutrient in your substrate for the actual plants to feed off. That's how they're gonna carpet. But with that all aside, let's get straight into the list. All right, so at number 10, we've got dwarf hair grass. Now dwarf hair grass gives you a fine grassy look in your aquarium. Now it's a pretty easy plant to carpet, but it's gonna take some patience with this one. If you want it to spread out, you need to make sure that nothing's shadowing over it. Now nothing is like taking away the light because it doesn't need all the light it can get. If you wanna get some textures in your carpet, you just wanna dot hair grass throughout your carpet along with something else, that works really well too. It just adds more texture to your aquarium, a texture that you can't get from a lot of the other aquarium plants. So that's what makes them so unique. To grow out in carpet, they'll send runners out and it'll send it out through the substrate you won't see it and then the new plant will grow out at the end and they'll come out into the substrate you should break up the dwarf hair grass that you buy and dot it out throughout the area you want it to carp it out and then it'll merge together using all the little runners and it'll carp it out eventually right now number nine is a carpeting plant for your larger aquariums we're talking like 30 gallons or larger and this is blixa japonica so blixa japonica is a pretty unique little aquarium plant now it grows like a little bush and how it'll grow is it'll kind of, it'll start off as a bush, then it'll grow this little like stem kind of that um, grows up and shoots some more leaves out. And then you can like trim it from the stem. Really unique little aquarium plant. And usually you use it as a mid ground or background plant for nano aquariums. But I've seen people do before carpets in their really large aquariums. If you wanna get a carpet in your aquarium, you'll need to plant in a couple of them, let them grow nice and big, wait for them to start growing a nice noticeable stem and trim that stem and plant in a new plantlet and keep doing that with all the little pieces of Blixa japonica until you get a nice carpet in your tank. I've seen a couple people do this before, but I put it number nine because it's for your larger aquariums and it also takes a bit of patience too. So yeah, bear that in mind, especially if it's in a low tech setup. Now number eight is Liliopsis, also known as Microsword. It's another really nice grassy looking carpeting plant, completely different texture though to dwarf hair grass. It looks really nice as a carpet in an aquarium. I put it number eight because to actually get that really nice condensed carpet in your aquarium you do need co2 and high lighting but nonetheless you can get a carpet with a lot of patience in low light no co2 conditions i've got it kind of carpeting out in one of my aquariums you're going to need to make sure that you don't have it in a tall tank because it needs as much light as it can get to but nonetheless it's still pretty easy you should be able to buy it from your local fish store pretty affordable plant and grows really well in low tech setups now number seven is monte carlo now monte carlo makes it in everyone's top carpeting plant lists because it is pretty easy people say you need CO2 and high lighting to grow it, that is not true. So this aquarium has Monte Carlo behind me, this is 20 liter. Although it does not look like a great carpet right now, it's because I just remodeled the tank. But a while ago when I was keeping up with the maintenance, I did have a really nice looking carpet in here. In a low tech setup though, it won't look like that Monte Carlo that you see in all the high tech setups. It'll grow more like a weedy sort of plant. It'll have more like Rotala slash pearlweed looking leaves. It grows really well. As long as you've got some lighting getting down to the bottom of the tank, then it'll grow really well. It makes it number seven on the list because it is pretty easy. You don't need a high tech setup to grow it. And it just creates an awesome little carpet in your aquarium. All right now, number six is a bit of a weird one. It is moss. You wouldn't think you could carpet moss out, but I've actually got a little carpet of Christmas moss in one of my aquariums. It's not that neat just because the tank has a really bad light on it. But if you did have like some decent lighting going on without CO2. You can get like Java moss, Christmas moss, or peacock moss, any of those sort of mosses that grow flat and kind of grow along surfaces. If you stick the moss onto a rock, and you place it on the substrate and it'll grow across and then carpet it out across the bottom. It can look really nice, especially if you've got more of a breeding tank than the Java moss carpet can look really nice and natural. So yeah, if, the, if that interests you, give moss a try. There's a lot of different types out there and you can find one that suits you and suits the sort of look you're going for in your aquarium. Right, number five, we've got a very fun little aquarium plant called Stalkerine Repens, also known as S Repens, which is what I'm gonna call it because it's so much easier. S Repens is a great little carpeting plant. It does not need CO2 at all to carpet out, but it does 
just need probably medium lighting. That's the only thing about this plant. If you've got the lighting though, and you've got the nutrients in the substrate, it'll grow quickly and it'll carpet out really nicely. So you can carpet it out two ways. The first way is if you've got enough lighting, it'll just grow vertically across the substrate and carpet out like that. Or if you don't have great lighting, then it'll kind of grow up. And what you can do is like trim it back each time it grows too tall and then you can replant that new plantlet back into the substrate and keep doing that until you've got a carpet growing out. But it's up to you, it depends on what sort of setup you've got going on, if it's high tech or low tech. All right, number four, we've got the broadleaf chainsaw. This is an awesome little plant that I've got growing out. I'm not carpeting it out because I don't have a big aquarium. Now the broadleaf chainsaw grows super well. Like I've got a $50 aquarium light on my 60 centimeter aquarium and it's already carpeting out. Now the thing is though, it is a pretty big plant. So this is more of a carpet for your 40 gallons or larger I reckon. Of course you could get a carpet out in your smaller aquariums and just take up a lot of room but with not much lighting at all and no CO2 it'll grow out. Like its name it sends out a little chain it goes across just like hair grass and that sort of thing and then a new plantlet will grow off the end and it'll grow a new little chain. A new sword will grow off the end as well. they will keep doing that around and around the substrate system until you've got a dense carpet. And it'll, you might also find though, if you don't keep up with the maintenance, that it'll kind of grow out into the other areas of the tank. What you just got to do is make sure it's in a area where like in a divided area, basically just monitor it and make sure it doesn't get into the other plants. If you leave it for too long, um, if you're like on holidays, you might find it does grow out a little in the tank, but you just trim it back and it should be fine. But if that sort of carpeting plant interests you, but you've got smaller aquariums like I do, don't worry because next up we've got the pygmy chainsaw. So the pygmy chainsaw is the exact same thing, but miniature. So the leaves only get around like that long and it's great for your five gallon and up aquariums. So you just get a nice carpet of that. You don't need highlighting at all. It'll send runners and the carpet out and it'll look amazing. So yeah, if you've got like a smaller aquarium, the only thing you need to bear in mind is that both these plants are high maintenance. So you're gonna have to be trimming them regularly if once they start getting into the other regions of the tank. That's just one thing to bear in mind. That's the only downside in my opinion, but yeah, they make a great carpeting plant. If you want something really easy that grows fast, consider Pygmy Chainsaw for your nano aquariums. Ooh, we're getting into my favorites now. Number two, we've got the Dwarf Sagittaria. Dwarf Sagittaria is a very popular carpeting plant for low-tech aquariums. It grows just like the Pygmy Chain Swords and the Broadleaf Chain Swords. The size of the actual sword though of Dwarf Sag is kind of like in between the two sizes of the Chain Swords. So it's kind of like, I reckon it's ideal as a carpet for a 15 gallon and above. To be honest, I haven't grown it myself, but I really want to. Apparently it grows really well for everyone. If you can find it at your local fish store, Give it a try because it does not need much lighting, it doesn't need CO2 and it's gonna carpet out. The main difference with Dwarf Sag and the Chainsaws is that the Dwarf Sag has a different sort of leaf shape. You gotta look at them side by side and see which one you reckon look, will look better in your aquarium, which one you prefer. It's all up to your own personal preference really. So great carpeting aquarium plant, consider it. If you want something low maintenance, I can carpet out in a low tech aquarium. Poor and number one, we have Pearlweed. Now, pearlweed is the all-in-one aquarium plant, in my opinion, it's my favorite. They've only started growing it recently. Now, you can use it as a carpeting plant, mid-ground plant, or a background plant. It is the all-in-one aquarium plant. Super easy to grow, it does not need much lighting at all. It's so easy to grow. Once you've got some, a couple stems, if you grow that out with some low to medium lighting, you'll get some really good growth and you'll be propagating it out within only a matter of one or two months. So you can carpet it out just like you can with Monte Carlo. If it's got enough lighting, it'll carpet across. Really nice little carpet if that's what you're going for. And I have to say, it's probably my favorite aquarium plant of all time. Now, if you want to see how I carpeted the Monte Carlo in this aquarium, it doesn't look great right now, but at the time it grew really well. Well then click this video on the screen, which links to the Aquascape tutorial of this aquarium. Check that out, it's, good. it's a good fun video. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comments down below. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next video.